this lesson we will learn about a commonly chosen application server uwsgi. Uwsgi, also pronounced as uwsgi, is a production ready replacement for run server command. In development mode we use command run server, well in production you should not run your application with run server command. A combination of uwsgi and nginx should be used instead. Also notice that in production mode these settings allowed host is mandatory. In this lesson you will learn how to transition from development to production. In production you must use nginx to serve static files. But because this lesson is about you whisky, I will show you how you can serve static files without nginx. Keep in mind that this is for the sake of learning, so that you will understand better the concepts. Let's start. I have here a common Django project which I called doc storage. This project has one app which I call land and land app has static files directory where I have placed a couple of JavaScript files, CSS files and even one image. In the settings directory I followed the good practice and placed all common settings in base py and environment specific settings in dev py and prod py. Because now I am in development mode I will start application with run server command. Notice that by default my settings file is docstorage-settings.dev and this is how my application looks like. Let me now stop run server command and in the same python virtual environment where I have installed, uh, where I have installed Django I will install uwsgi. Let me double check where uwsgi was installed. As you can see it is installed inside my current virtual environment. Starting uwsgi application is pretty simple. First argument tells uwsgi to listen on port 8000 for incoming http request. That's simple enough. This argument tells where wsgi.py file is located. Now if you don't specify where Django settings module is, then this file will try to use default Django settings module. You can see it here. This is wsgi.py file. So in my case it will try to use development version of the settings file. This is the same mechanism manage.py file uses to figure out its default settings module. You can see it here in manage.py file. This is the simplest way you can run application with uwsgi. To use uwsgi or Django in production in general, you don't necessarily need to know all details about WSGI protocol and why Django needs to run under an application server like uwsgi or gunicorn at all. But if you are curious, I recorded a pro lesson which explores WSGI protocol. In pro version of this lesson, you will learn why WSGI is needed and how it works. I won't publish pro lessons on YouTube, you can watch them on djangolessons.com instead. Let's run doc store application with uwsgi and check it in browser. But it runs without static content. You see that initial request was successful, but all other static content like CSS, JavaScript and image, they were not found. It is so because by default application server does not serve static content. I want to use configuration file instead of providing command line arguments. So I created docstorage.ini file, this one, where I will place uwsgi options. Notice that configuration keys, this one and this one, matches the ones that I have here in command line. This one and this one. With this configuration file I can run uwsgi like this. Notice that I still run this command from projects directory. Projects directory is the folder where you find manage.py file. Let's first remove any confusion about environment variables and be very specific about Django settings module. So in this file I will add key which will point to Django settings module, which is this one. Or this one. 
So we are still in development mode. So let's try UWSG again. Okay, great. And now let's start the transition to production. The first thing what I'll do, I'll change settings.dev to settings.prod. My prod.py file is this one, which is basically all common settings except debug is changed to false. So let's restart uwsg. It didn't quite work, and the issue that we have here is the one that I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson. I told you that in production, allowed host setting is mandatory. Let's add it. Allowed hosts is a security measure. It instructs Django to accept requests only from this host. I'll restart uwsg now. And it didn't work again because in hosts I specified 127.0.0.1 as local host, which is not really the same as the one I have here. So let me change this one to 127 like this and now it should work. To make it work for both cases, for 127.0.0.1 and local host, I will update my allowed hosts. It works now for local host as well. Let's take care now of static files. Another important configuration for production is static root. I will repeat because it is very important. Static root option is used only in production. And this configuration is used by collect static command. Collect static command will gather all static files from all apps of this Django project and place them in this folder. This step is necessary because in production is the web server who takes care of static files, not Django. Notice that Django settings module points to production version of the settings. And maybe you noticed here that static folder, this one, was just created. And it contains the static files from free apps, admin, land, and Django extensions, because I use Django extensions. I will show you a small trick. The thing is that uwsg can serve static files the same way nginx does. Let me show you first and then I will explain what happens. To instruct uwsg to serve static content you need to add this option. I will start uwsg again and check this out. Here it is. What is not so obvious at this moment is that uwsg serves static files from this folder. And this folder is static root, which we configured here. And where we place static files with collect static command. What static map option does is illustrated here. When my application receives a request and uwsg matches against this string here, it strips it away and replaces it with what is on this side, with demo static. The result is the absolute path of the file which will be served by the uwsg. Nginx uses alias directive with this syntax to accomplish prefix matching mechanism described here. And I'm sure you understand that this directory is the place where our collect static gathered all static files into. And now let's move on and create a systemd unit for uwsg. But before I want to add one more option. All this time I started uwsg from command line and I started it from projects folder. And that is not accidental because this path is relative to the projects folder. So I will add this option. This option tells uwsg where is the project folder so to say. And once I have this option here, I can start uwsg from any other directory. So I'll move to my, let's say, home folder. I'll make it really cool and I'll deactivate my Python virtual environment. And with this command, uwsg will start the application. Check this out. You see it works. And it's not just works, it also serves static files. And just to show you that this is important, let's just remove it and see what happens. Unable to load app 0. It doesn't know where is the root folder. 
This absolute path here is crucial. Given this absolute path, you wizgy will understand that it will need to locate all Python packages from this Python virtual environment. Now in my demo etc folder, I'll create a systemd unit for uwizgy. Uh, and this is how uh, systemd service will look like. And I am 100% sure that you recognize this command. On production server, you will place systemd file in etc systemd. I mean here. But because I'm not on real production machine, I will place systemd unit file into my user folder so that I will be able to run the service with my own user. Let's do that. And now from any directory I can start systemd as a user service. Fantastic, it works. By the way, I recorded a screencast about systemd where I explain in detail about this option. You maybe want to have a look at that. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.